When the United Nations was born 75 years ago, large parts of the world lay in ruin. The Hague had also suffered greatly during the Second World War. Many were grieving the loss of loved ones fallen on the front, murdered in concentration camps, or killed in bombing raids. You needed coupons to buy many things, and there were still shortages of everything, except for one thing, hope. Hope for a better future, more humane future, to live in peace and freedom. The founding of the United Nations gave that hope wings and renewed courage to people all over the world. Now, 75 years later, we can look back with gratitude on what the United Nations and its affiliated organizations have achieved. 75 years of United Nations and countless stories of people whose lives took a decisive turn because of the UN's involvement. People who learned to read and write, for example, who could develop this themselves and create a new life for themselves after a disaster or war. And now, too, the world is filled with hope. Hope that the pandemic, which has gripped us all and taken so many victims, will soon come to an end. As Secretary General Antonio Guterres said earlier this summer, the world's urban regions were the ground zero of the pandemic. On average, 90% of reported cases have been in cities, which is not surprising, given that more than half the world's population lives in cities. In the meantime, the cities still have to keep their public services running, that they have so far succeeded says a lot about the resilience of cities and their inhabitants. But it also means that repairing the damage caused by COVID-19 will have to take place mainly in the urban regions. From well before the pandemic, cities were largely working to meet the sustainable development goals, such as tackling poverty and social inequality, or providing clean drinking water and decent sanitary facilities. The Hague plays a leading role in achieving goal 16, peace, justice, and strong public services, including in finding solutions to international issues such as migration and climate change that are becoming more and more important, as was discussed before. The vast majority of climate measures will have to be implemented locally in a practical, hands-on way. All in all, quite apart from the coronavirus, local authorities are finding that more and more global issues are landing on their plate. This is also why cities have sought each other out in international alliances, such as the UCLG, the United Cities and Local Governments, and the Global Parliament of Mayors. Alliances where they can learn from each other and give a clear signal. Listen to us, just like to the youth, and re involve us in tackling the challenges facing our world. Cities find the United Nations standing along, alongside them in this, as shown by the calls made, made, made by the Secretary General on the battle against climate change and dealing with the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic. I believe that these and other matters will only be resolved when cities are more closely involved in determining the course of the United Nations. A course which, more than ever, must be focused on tomorrow and beyond, on the on generations to come. And therefore, it's only logical that 
there should be an important role for young people during the celebration of this United Nations anniversary. After all, it essentially boils down to the future they want and the, uni the United Nations they need. The Hague City would be very pleased to offer young people a platform to think about this and how appropriate it was that we just saw the T-shirt and the manifesto and the chair, otherwise, in other words, the presentation of the young one's findings. And I'm very curious to know more. Excellencies, everyone, the 75th anniversary of the United Nations is a call to us all. The call, even now as nationalist sentiments are increasingly heard, is to continue our commitment to international cooperation, peace, justice and security. To be able to live in freedom and security, free from fear. Freedom from fear was one of the four freedoms formulated by US President Roosevelt. And that laid the foundations for the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, part of our identity, the identity of our city, of the UN. Thank you very much. Thank you.